talk about the upbringing of the children, we basically go with this famous statement of the Prophet, where the, uh, the time of uh, upbringing is divided into three segments of seven, seven, seven years each. Where the first seven years, you have to be easy with your child. They are just children. Let a child be a child. But from seven to 14, you have to bring in this discipline. And then 17 to 21, we are told, consider him to be like your friend. Provide him guidance, you know, give him the, the knowledge so that, and help him to make right decisions by himself. And if he makes a mistake, or she makes a mistake, guide them. And so during the last seven, seven years, from 14 to uh, 21, that is a very crucial time. But what I want to talk about it tonight is the issue of the mutual impact. It's not only the parents who have the impact on the character building of the children, but once the children grow up and become teenagers and young, you know, young adults, sometimes the impact is the other way around also. It could be positive, it could be negative, just as even from Parents to children, it could be positive or it could be negative. And this is where we have to realize that, you know, if they have a negative impact on their own parents, then the parents have to have that strong foundation to resist. Not give in because of the love that they have for their children. That is the fitna. When Allah says, Amwalukum wa awladukum fitna, that is the moment of test and trial. Is the love for them more powerful? Or is the issue of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more powerful? And this is where, you know, we are not talking about, you know, shunning them totally, no. You can still keep the doors open. Still be, you know, kind to them. But do not allow their negative influence to impact in your aqeedah or your practical life. Let us look at an, an, another example from the history of the Ahlul Bayt. The example of Zubair bin Abwam. Who was Zubair? From the mother's side, he is the first cousin of the Prophet and Ali. The mother of Zubair, Safiya, is sister of Abu Talib. From his father's side, Al-Awwam, she, she is a brother of Khadija. So from both sides, you know, he is related to the Prophet and Amir al-Mu'mineen. He was among the early, you know, Muslims who accepted the message of Islam, supported the Prophet. He was there in all the battles with Rasulullah, supporting him. And even after the wafat of the Prophet, he was among those few who refused to do the bayat to Abu Bakr. And he was in the house of Fatima as a protest against that. And so he is with Ali. Even in the chaotic situation of the days of Uthman, he was among the leaders of the opposition at the time. And he was among the instigator who ended up killing the third Khalifa. And this is where then they come to Amir al-Mu'mineen and to say, you, we want you to become our Khalifa and our leader. At that time, the first individuals to do bay'at, pledge allegiance, on the hands of Amir al-Mu'mineen was Tal Talha and Zubair. And what happened after that? Remember the relationship. And remember the outcome. What is the aqibat? What is the end of it? When they realize Ali is not going to appoint them as governors of the areas that they wanted, and he did not even continue the extra privileges given to, given to them during the second Khalifa from the Bayt al-Mahal, they rebelled. They went to him and they said, you know, we want permission to go for Umrah. And Amir al-Mu'minin respond by saying, ما تريدان العمرة بل تريدان الغدرة. You are not going out there to Mecca with the intention of Umrah. 
you are actually going with the, in, in, uh, with the intention of, you know, treachery. And they went there. They incorporated Aisha into their plot, which ended up in what is known as the uh, Battle of Jamal. Now, when we look at the example of Zubair, closely related to the Ahlul Bayt and the Prophet, yes, there were problems of greed of position and wealth in his decision. But there is one more very important element which influenced him against Ali, which was not only the issue of greed for wealth and position, it was his own adult son, Abdullah. Abdullah's mother is the daughter of Abu Bakr, sister of Aisha. And he was basically very close to Aisha, his own khala. And whatever was the temperament or the character or the like and dislike of Aisha was on Abdullah bin Zubayr also. Including this dislike for Banu Hashim, especially towards Amir al-Mu'mineen. And this is where we see, I don't want to go into the story of Jamal, recited it previously, but at the end, even in, in, in the battle of Jamal, Amir al-Mu'minin tried to advise uh, Zubair, even one to one. And he, to a moment, changed his position. But when he went back to the campsite, it was his son, Abdullah, who put him to shame. Or you are afraid of the Hashimid swords? What will history say? What will the women of Quraysh talk about you that you are a coward? But Zubair said, well, I did a qasam. In the presence um, on that day and even previously, that I will not fight with Ali. He said, well, you know, if you violate your qasam, you do the kafara, and then it's okay. And this is where you have the son, an adult son, influencing the father, and the father is being influenced. And this is where we have to realize that, you know, these are not only stories for stories. These are examples of real challenges that people can face in their own life, even within the family relationships. And so we have to know what is our path. Are we on the Salat al-Mustaqim or not? Whether it is the father or the mother or the brother or sister or son or daughter, if they are having any negative impact, we have to resist that. Nobody says, you know, shun them, don't be kind to them in this dunya, but do not allow the negative impact on your, relig your religion be, you know, influenced. <music>